This is lesson three in using Adobe InDesign. You may recognize uh, our uh, page here from our previous exercises. And remember that we put uh, a shape on here from our rectangle tool. Uh, and you may be wondering how I got it, the text to flow around it here. And that's what we're going to cover in this lesson along with a few other things. Before we begin that, I'm going to delete this one. Let's go in and fine tune our layout a little bit here. I took the uh, headline and made it into a style of its own called headline. And now what we want to do is line things up using our letting grid. So we'll get our direct select tool here, our selection tool I mean. And you notice how it just snaps to the guides. Uh, if it doesn't do that, go to the view menu to grids and guides and make sure that snap to guide is checked because that will make your job a lot easier. Now we're going to leave a full line of text under our headline. That's always what we want to do. We want to separate items that are related by a line of text and items that are unrelated perhaps by two lines of text. And we can slide our text up like that. Here's what our page looks like so far. Remember we did our little subheads. Now you see we have a subhead trapped at the bottom. We don't want to ever do that and we can correct it just by bringing this down a little bit and uh, like so and um, readjust our headline the page looks pretty good now we want to put a picture on the page and uh, when we put pictures on the page we can either uh, create an open space if we had a strong horizontal picture here for example we could just place it above the the headline and that's a good way to do it when you when you don't have text flowing around the the image. Let's go ahead and place a photo. And if we go to our if we go to our um, file menu to place, that's how we'll do it. Now you notice it's Command D on the PC. It would be Control D, and that's a very handy way to get our uh, way to place objects. So I'm going to type Command D and um, I'll find my image here, a TIFF file, which is what we want for print. And you'll notice it comes in like this. And now if I click and drag across, it will draw a, a picture box that's in proportion to the picture. Very handy. Uh, I'm going to move this up. Let's adjust our type a little bit to accommodate our picture. A lot of doing in design is just working your way through till everything uh, fits. And I'm going to zoom in. Now, when we have a picture in InDesign, the way it works is the picture box is like a window that you're looking through to see your picture. You can close part of the window, and this is how we would crop our image. Now we see less of the picture. We can use our direct select tool and now you'll see there's sort of a brown background here and that would allow us to slide our picture around in the frame like so okay again we'll go to our selection tool deselect and then select again and now you see our frame here notice that our picture isn't filling the frame we also can uh, go up to our object menu to the fitting uh, option here and fit fit content proportionally so that our, our picture keeps its correct shape and now we can adjust our frame if we want to now enlarge this frame along with all of the contents we would hold the shift and the command key or shift and control on a PC. We would go to the corner here and drag and everything will resize itself proportionally. The frame and the picture as well. Uh, I'm going to bring the bottom of this up a little bit and then we'll bring our headline up. Now we would leave want to leave room for our caption if we had one. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And we have a line of space between our picture and our headline. 
and a line of space between our descender here and the top of our text. If we want to adjust a little bit more, we can do that. Bring the top of this down. Bring our headline down. And remember, we had some more picture there, so we can use that. And there's how our page looks. What if we want to put a picture in the text? So let's get another picture here. Again, Command D or Control D on a PC. And um, I'm going to get a, a picture of some hay, like so. And I'm going to uh, draw that here. And you'll notice it comes out in the middle of a line, so I'll use my direct select tool to align it to our baseline grid. Okay, You can see that our text is flowing beneath the picture here. And the way we correct that is by going to the text wrap menu. If you need to find it, remember you go to the window menu to text wrap, and that'll show you where it is. This symbol here shows you the text shows the text flowing across the object, and this one shows the text flowing around the object. So if I click this one, now we have text flowing, and if I move it over, you can see you can fill one column, it can fill two columns, and so forth. We have the ability to offset that text. For instance, we notice we that the text is right up against the bottom of our image here, and we always want a line of space vertically between our elements. So we can correct that by going to our text wrap palette. Make sure this little chain is broken here. You can click it to make sure it's broken because we only, we only want to adjust the bottom. And then we can add text wrap like so. 11 points to match our lettering. And now we have space underneath. So that's how we would handle pictures. Um, and uh, we could also center a picture, although let me say that uh, I think we should avoid these narrow columns of type. But let's say that we wanted to do it this way. Or let's say we wanted to bring it back like so and center it between two columns however we want to do it. Then we could add text wrap to either side. In this case one pica because that's our gutter. And that would give us the text wrap we want here. And Then we just align it to our grid and we're all set. Okay, But I, again I don't recommend that you have these narrow uh, alley or uh, uh, columns of type. Better to have set up your grid for a good readable column and use the entire column like so. Okay, now we remember we jumped our type. We're going to go to the Pages palette here. I'm going to show you another powerful feature and that is the ability to set up master pages. We might want, for instance, to have page numbers on every page. And rather than go in and put those in on each page and, and uh, risk making mistakes on the pages, we're going to use our master page. Up here on the top of the pages uh, palette, here are the master pages, and we start out by default with the A master, and so all these pages are listed as A master pages. Okay. If I double click here, you'll see I get a two page spread, and you want to be careful now that you recognize where you are on the that you're not on a content page or on a master page. The number one rule is that no content goes on the master page. No content. Only standing items that you want to appear on every page. So we're going to put page numbers on here. The first thing I want to do though is adjust my grid. You'll notice that the grid doesn't line up with my margin. We start out with a margin of I believe six picas on the bottom. The way we would fix this is go to our layout menu to margins and columns and we would just adjust the uh, bottom margin here. Make sure this chain is broken. We could adjust it up or down 
until it lines up on the grid there. And you can see it worked on both of them here because uh, we had both pages selected on our pages palette. Let's set up a page number down here. I'm going to give a line of type of space and then put my page number and I'm going to line that page number up with the corner of the page like so. And I'm going to give it room to add some folio information like so. And it's going to come into my basic paragraph, so that's why it's indented here. We'll fix that in a minute. Now rather than put a number in, I'm going to use what's called a marker. So we go to the Type menu to Insert Special Character to Markers to Current Page Number. Okay, it's under the Type menu, Insert Special Character, Markers, Current Page Number. Notice it puts an A on there because we're on the A master. And I'm going to put a dash in here, not a hyphen, a dash, and I'm going to use an N dash. That would be Option or Alt, Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and then the hyphen key. And notice it gives us something a little fatter. Here's what a hyphen looks like. We save the hyphen for hyphenating words and use either an N dash that we have here, or if we hold the Shift Option or Shift Alt on a PC, and then the hyphen key, we get the M dash. Okay, so we're going to use the N dash here and then uh, put in some text here for a folio. Okay, let's uh, format this a little bit. Let's go up to our object, or excuse me, first our paragraph palette and make it zero indent. Let's decrease the size a bit. Instead of 10 point, let's go with 8 point. And now we have a nice folio here. Let's put one on the other page. Rather than go through all that work again, let's copy this using the selection tool and paste it down and we can line it up over here with our column again. Now you notice it's not set up right, so we'll do some formatting. First thing we'll do on the paragraph palette is make it flush right. We'll also put the page number on the outside, option or alt hyphen, then I pasted that in there. And now we have our page number set up on the master page. Now what does this do? If we go to all of our other pages now, they have page numbers and where we put the marker in, we now have the correct page number. So if we rearrange our pages in any way, we will have the correct page number on every page see it there, page three and so forth. Very powerful. We can make as many master pages as we want. If we wanted a title page, for example, we could set up another master. We would go to the, the pages menu to new master. We would call it B. We would call it chapter opening. Uh, let's just use a single page here. And we'll change this one to create a symmetrical layout for our title page by going up again to Layout, to Margins and Columns. Let's make all our margins equal. Let's keep the number of columns at 6. And now we have a symmetrical page with no page number on it. And we can use this for chapter openings, for title pages, and so forth and we would apply it simply by clicking and dragging it to the page we want it to apply to. So there's our B master on this page. Okay, our next lesson will look at refining our text a bit more using character palettes and we'll look at some other special features.